Um, you know what I'm saying? You can't be wearing that in my house, yo. You lucky you ain't come in with that Celtics fitted joke. You really got kicked the fuck out. I'm keeping it 100 with you. Like, oh, you would have never been allowed to come in my house with a Celtics hat. I had a fuck. Yo, my nigga, nah, I should have burned that shit in front of you, my nigga. Don't come in my house with a Celtics hat. <laughs> A lot of people had me written off. A lot of people thought that I fell off and that I was actually just not gonna ever come back. And it's funny because I was actually sitting back planning the whole thing out. I knew at the time that I was taking off, yeah, I was in a studio, you understand? I was making sure that I got everything done that I wanted to make sure I got done right. No matter what, from the mixtapes, to the sound, to even me doing a production, you understand? So I never stopped. That was one thing about him. The same way Eric B and Rakim sat there and said they thinking of a master plan is the same way I was thinking about it too. I was putting together my whole situation. I didn't want anybody to say I needed help. I didn't want anybody to say, oh, he had to do it with these motherfuckers or he had to do it this way. When actually I did it by myself. You know how many people sat there and actually turned their back on me? I was sitting there and smiling in my fucking face and was telling me, oh, don't you can't do it? That's the shit that you gotta deal with in this industry that I fucking hate. Nobody understands that part. But that's the one thing about me is that shit never stopped me. You understand that, yo? That shit will never stop me. I'm a different kind of breed. Nobody could sit there and tell me I'm not gonna do the best at what I do. Because no matter what, I am on top of my game. And no matter how much you may doubt me, and no matter how much you may think that it's not possible, I've done the impossible before. It was nothing for me. I actually got urges. I get fucking fantasies off doing the impossible. Nobody can sit there and say, oh, I'm just the average DJ. Because it'd be goddamn lying. Because you know what? Anytime you come to a Young C show, I gave you 110%. No matter if I had the flu or not. No matter what, I could be sick as hell that night. And there's been nights, yeah, I remember I was DJing with the flu one night. Pack club and all. I'm sitting there DJing and everybody thought that I was hype. And nobody knew I was sick. Like I had a 105 degree temperature. Like I was about to pass the hell out. I remember sitting there drinking third flu and taking NyQuil at the same time while trying to stay the fuck awake and DJ, you understand that? Just because I wanted to give these people my 110%. No matter what, even if there's 10 people in a club, because I didn't start DJing with 100,000 people in a club for me. I started DJing with 10 people in a club and I remember I had to impress those 10 people. So me just impressing those 10 people, I got everything that I ever wanted out of being a DJ. Nobody could take all the success and all the hard work that I've accomplished. Nobody could take that from me. And that's something that I drive in. And that's better than any drug. Success is the best drug, no matter what. I think that's the best high of all time. Yeah, it is success. Because who doesn't want to be successful? Who doesn't want to say they've done it? Because that's what we all go for. If you're going for the money in this, you might as well quit. Because that wasn't my goal. My goal was to be successful. And I always have that ego. My ego will be the killer of me. Because I always wanted to prove it for myself. I didn't want to prove it to nobody else. I wanted to prove it to me. As long as I proved it to me, I knew I was going to be in good hands.